Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to a brand new episode of One Piece Bounty Rush. Now, what I want to do today is talk a little bit more on the game. Um, I planned on doing a challenge battle, but apparently it went away today. So what we're going to do is just talk about the news a little bit and then play like one or two matches because, oops, I was busy, unfortunately. So let's just go ahead and talk about the news itself and kind of get into things real quick. I mostly just wanted to talk about the new six month anniversary campaign and also like the new straw hats and see how things go. So first and foremost, we did end up getting the six month anniversary, which means that this game has been out after its re-release for six months already. It feels like, it feels like no time has passed. It feels like the game has just kind of been doing a really good job of things and I'm happy about it. Um, we have different like events that we're getting. So we're getting 50 free diamonds, which is quite nice. It'll let me do my multis on the Frankie when he comes up. And we have a guarantee here of during this time, during the entire month of July, we are going to be getting four different banners of different straw hats during the month. Uh, we already have the chopper banner currently up, and I imagine it'll be going until the Thursday this week. Um, he's all right. We'll talk about him a little bit or in a little bit about his kind of his kit and what he has and doesn't have. Uh, and we also did get Robin confirmed here, which is quite nice. She actually seems like she'll be a really good force on the actual game. Um, but we also have two confirmations of two other characters during the month as well in the Frankie and the Brook, which honestly might be more exciting uh, just in general because Frankie's going to be big. Frankie's going to be a very large man and Brook is going to have another freezing ability similar to how Aokiji does. And we already know how crazy the freeze is on Aokiji at this point. So I can only imagine what kind of AoEs he might have with his sword. So it actually should be a really good thing, and I'm hoping for the best during this month when things come around. Um, and we'll talk about them in a little bit. We also had Alabasta Stage Night Challenge. Between the 5th to the 8th, there was a challenge battle that you could only play as the Alabasta people, but it was quite cool. It seems like it would be really fun, but it went away last night, so I made a mistake and didn't end up doing it at all. So... Whoops. I've just been busy. I got to S- minus the other day and just kind of didn't even think about trying to do it. So next time I will end up doing a video on it. I can guarantee you that much. Uh, we also have Make-A-Wish the Star Festival campaign, which actually is based on likes on the Facebook page. I'll talk about that in a second. And we have two mystery campaigns, which I imagine might be the NAMI um, upgrade event, but I don't know just yet. That was revealed, but hasn't come to the game just yet. And who knows what else it could end up being. So I'm excited. Uh, however, what we also have, if we go back into the news here, and we go down to Make-A-Wish Star Festival campaign. So, I personally don't use Facebook. I, I don't like Facebook. I think Facebook is an atrocity, and scrolling through that will... It'll kill you. Just looking at, like, all the sad shit on there, it, it, it pains me personally. But if you do have Facebook, we do have an event right now for the actual official Facebook page, which gives you four different wishes, and depending on how many likes or reactions it gets, it'll end up giving you those items. So, the first wish, which is almost guaranteed to get hit, is I want rainbow diamonds, vote with like. Uh, we have I want to strengthen characters, vote with love. I want new stamps, which is vote with wow. And I want more treasures, which is vote with ha ha. So if you do play this game and you want to go ahead and check that out, you can go ahead and go over to the Facebook page here. We need to get at least 300 shares in total, apparently, and we'll get all four of the wishes granted, and I'm down for it. I mean, I feel like the new stamps is kind of something you should just have in the game anyway, but sure. And I'm down for some extra rainbow diamonds, so, oh, hey, Facebook people, if you do a Facebook, you should go do the thing and press those buttons, because that does sound quite nice. Now, honestly... If we go ahead and look at the kits here of the new characters, I kind of want to talk about why I think that Chopper... Um, he got shafted. Again, I, I, I think would be the way to put it. Honestly, Armpoint Chopper is fantastic. He's a great character. He's also an attacker. There's a reason for that. So here we have the Blue Runner Chopper, of which is mostly focused. His best stat is attack, uh, which is always weird. So what are his skills like? What could he use? Because, you know, post time skip, Chopper's, he, he's very strong. Um, he has different abilities, but a lot of them are kind of cool. He can use Monster Point freely whenever he wants to. Um, he can use his, like, Rumble Ball to do whatever he wants to and have very little of that recoil. So what would you give him in terms of a returning kit? So his first strong attack is I'm a doctor. 
A mid-range area of effect that does nothing aside from increasing your ally's speed for 10% for 24 seconds. Okay, yeah, that, yeah, yeah, cool, 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 cool. Um, doesn't seem that great. Okay, uh, what's, what's the second? Lie back down, a mid-range area of effect attack that recovers your ally's HP. It also does a small attack and gives a defense buff at level 5. Meaning, we have a very small heal, a 10% defense buff for 10 seconds, and a bare minimum amount of damage with this needle for every 32 seconds he's in combat. Not great, in my opinion. Um, he is based on being this annoying runner from across the field, running around and just trying to steal treasures, healing himself and knocking you away from him. But he doesn't seem to specialize in anything in particular, honestly. And even if you look at the traits here, when your team has less treasures secured, boost the combat reduction speed of skill 2 by 50%, which basically means just heal faster. When your, uh, when your strength is more than 70%, increase the amount of skill treasure gauge that you get when you capture a treasure. At 5 star, when your team is around or when your team has less treasure secured, reduce damage taken by 20% and when respawn or uh, increase the team boost gauge by 10%. That's cool. But all in all, he's a very very basic blue runner. Um he'll be he'll be good if you want to use a healing runner, but honestly, he doesn't have enough like field presence for me personally to end up using him. So he's just kind of here. If he had like monster point, I'd be super down to pull for him cuz honestly that'd be quite cool. But he is who he is, and that's how it goes. However, someone that actually did get some justice done to her is Nico Robin. Um, with 1.6k attack already, uh, pretty solid stats all around, and some skills that are very interesting. She'll be actually a really in interesting force in terms of combat. Um, mostly just because of this first strong attack here. So we have Quattro Mono Spank. Almost just said Monko. That is not the word. Uh, a mid-range area area attack nullifies stagger for a set amount of time and requires knockback at level 5. So this is every 18 seconds, level 5, knock people away from a treasure. Um, honestly, using this will be really good for trying to have her be almost a pseudo-defender type of role. Every 9 seconds, she'll have the ability to do like a shanks second for the most part, from what I'm seeing. It depends on if it'll be in front of her or all around in a circle, which I imagine it might be. Because uh, I... What I'm imagining right now is like the palms right there will come out and push them away and like push them in different directions. But we'll see when it actually comes around and we get gameplay of her. Um, that'd be cool. And we also have her second, which is a mid-range area attack, which has a chance to inflict tremor. Nullify stagger for a set amount of time as well. So first and foremost, does a skill attack, does a tremor at 50%, does a second skill attack, and has 100% chance of tremoring afterwards as well. Um, 51% uh, cooldown, which is kind of rough, but it should be good for trying to get people just kind of stunned and good to go. And she does a good job of things. She also has the attack boost because that's how people work as an attacker. And what makes her truly good from what I can see is this second trait on the trait one thing. So her first trait is when an area around your enemy's treasure, de increase damage dealt by 30%. Just generally, that's a very common attacker uh, trait and it does a good job at doing what it needs to, so I'll take it. But when your strength is more than 70%, boost the cooldown reduction speed of skill one by 50%, meaning that every nine seconds, this first is going to be up and available and able to be used. Meaning every nine seconds, which is half of the 18, which is already pretty crazy, you're able to just kind of go like, oh, you're not here anymore, bye which would be really, really nice for trying to play, especially like Saboti, trying to protect C with her and trying to just knock people off of the area constantly. It'll take them nine seconds to get back up there to actually fight you, so it's great. Uh, we also have, when using skill two, recover HP by 10%, and when your allies are not near the treasury area where you are at, reduce damage received by 20%, so she has like a pseudo defender ability there as well. Um, all in all, she's going to be crazy. 100% uh, guaranteed, she's going to be a very overwhelming force, and that first is going to be someone you need to learn how to perfect dodge immediately, because it is going to fuck you up really, really badly, which should be quite cool. So, all in all, I think that she's going to be the... Um, she might be like a pseudo new version of Time Skip Luffy based around knockback, which will be kind of crazy. So, I'm looking forward to when she drops, but I'm probably just going to go in on Frankie afterwards anyway, because I just kind of... 
no matter what it is, I just want to play as Frankie. That's like my main goal right now, and I want to try and do a full set of scouts to do that afterwards. So that's my main goal. However, for today, what I did want to do is we're going to run into this with Eustace Kid and Anel and just see how things go. Because I want to do challenge battles so bad today. I was looking forward to it so hard. But this morning was a very rude awakening because of that. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and try this again. Um, the first match didn't go well. So I want to try out a different match and see how things end up going this time around. Uh, the enemy team had only reds last time. And Eustace Kid was being one-shot very easily by Skypea Zoro. So this time around, we're going to try to balance this out a little bit more. Start with Anel and see how he can capture C. And just do some general work. Let's see how this ends up going. We actually have John Wick on our team as well, so we pretty much guaranteed win. I actually watched that movie very recently. I want to say... I guess a week ago or so? I'm looking forward to going and watching the second one, but it's not on Netflix just yet, so I'm deciding to just kind of wait until it drops. It's a good-ass series. Honestly, I need to go and watch more movies. Like, I... A big issue of mine is I've, I've never been the greatest uh, purveyor, I guess the word would be, of English media. Uh, I just kind of sit and don't watch anything a lot. So in the end, I haven't seen a lot of things that people would call very relevant and things that you would end up having to have seen by the point that I am in my current life. Uh, examples of that, I just fucked up. Examples of that would be stuff like Star Wars, uh, stuff like Indiana Jones, stuff like um, Aliens, stuff like Predator, stuff like uh, Pulp Fiction, stuff just general big pieces of media that were influential to the point of being like the big defining moment in several pieces of media in different ways like the ultimate sci-fi the ultimate blank the ultimate this the ultimate that so the guy's on my ass by the way so um i'm dead god damn it i need to try to oh i should have tried to roll that the issue is i just oh ah oh. That was the worst possible scenario. I'm gonna go get that. It's time for me to clean some stuff up here. But yeah, I wanna try to get to it, but the, honestly, I've always been bad at consuming new media. Um, I'm really bad at watching new shows because it takes so much of my attention. I'm just, I'm better at watching like the 17th bad show than the first good show, if that makes sense. I'm, I'm better at like checking out Kimoto Maruchan episode 76 than I am in actually checking out like anything relevant. It's taken me up to this long to actually try and start out. I'm dead, by the way. Fuck that poison! I hate it! Ah, oh, I was dead regardless, so it's not a huge deal, but goddamn. Crocodile is just ridiculous, and level 100s are always around these days. But I, I just, I have a problem trying to watch new things that are good. So, like, Flamelka's Brotherhood I didn't watch until very recently. I've kind of tried to pick it up from now. It's been difficult, because honestly, I don't know if I particularly enjoy full attention, because I'm always distracted with other stuff. My big issue is I'm always doing multiple things at once. I'm, I'm never just kind of sitting with myself. So it's always like, I'm doing this, but I'm also working on this thing. And, like... During Brotherhood, I've been trying to give my full attention to it, but it's been a pretty big issue. Uh, honestly, I'm just going to try and defend B, because we need to get B. We need to keep B. We need to be re B relevant. Haha, -ha, jokes. I'm dead. We lose. We lose! Great! Great! Because I'm fucking dumb! God damn it! Well, that's a GG. Oh, wait, no, we, we kept B. We kept B. We kept B. We're good. We're good. We're good. We got it back. Good. God, honestly, these last couple days, I've been able to catch that momentum. Like, even when we were streaming this game the other day, I've been able to catch the momentum of, like, a good flow of the games. Sometimes you get in those streaks of, like, I'm actually working really, really well. But even there, I didn't do that great of a job. I gotta try and get up there, man. This is an S-plus gameplay right here. I need to try and actually improve stuff up. It's just a matter of, I need to be in that mindset. And I don't know what that mindset is just yet. Like, it, it's, I've gotten times where I went on, like, winning streaks of 10 to, like, 13 or 14, and it's just a matter of catching that. It, it, you, you catch that, 
that mind shift and things work out. So I'll have to get there. But in the end, in today's episode, what I've learned is I need to go and watch Pulp Fiction to try and learn why Crocodile is such a meanie bobini. And that'll be the episode for today on Bounty Rush. Honestly, game's doing a great job. Looking forward to when Frankie drops, and I'll be doing a summoning video when he does end up doing so. So I'll see you guys later. Take it easy, and bye for now.